Hi, my name is Mike DeLaCluse. I'm the president of Lessman Instrument Company. I'd like to thank all of you for taking your time out of your busy schedules to join us for our 12th customer webinar where we will introduce you to LAN non-contact temperature technology. It may not be what you think it is, so in the next 35 to 45 minutes, we hope you learn how temperature measurement can help improve your process and product quality. Our presenter today is Richard Gag. Richard joined LAND in the UK in 1979 as an inside sales engineer and in the early 1980s transferred to LAND's U.S. operations near Philadelphia. He has over 20 years' experience with infrared temperature scanners and process thermal imaging systems applied to a wide range of industrial applications. Since 2006, he's been the product manager for non-contact temperature measurement systems throughout the Americas. He's been a product specialist for scanners since they were introduced in 1990 and now works at LAN's U.S. headquarters near Pittsburgh. With that introduction, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Richard. So here's a typical layout of a, of a scanner system. Um, the scanner would be um, sitting above a process looking at that uh, web of material that is uh, moving by it and it's scanning through an 80 degree scan angle and that scan speed is adjustable by the user anywhere between 10 scans a second which would be quite adequate for slow moving processes like the exit of a caster or something like that um, and it can be adjusted all the way up to 150 scans a second for small and fast moving objects um, if you were down at a coiler on a hot strip mill you might be seeing strip coming by at a few thousand feet per minute and scanning at 150 scans a second would make a lot more sense down on an application like that and then within each scan that we make we sample a thousand individual temperature points in that scan regardless of the scan speed that we've got set up um, we see here that we've got one connection to the scanner and we come back to a standard network switch nothing special it's an Ethernet switch and from that Ethernet switch we go back to a PC that will give you visualization of everything that the scanner is doing and will also allow you to save data files and, and then to automatically archive older files either onto another drive on that machine or, or over the network to something else and then we have a, an Ethernet connected IO processor which is optional and a number of customers will say they would like to have outputs for certain lanes of interest along their product okay and we can give them 4 to 20 milliamp outputs or, or voltage outputs and we can also bring inputs in to trigger different things so this is a typical use of uh, scanners on a hot strip mill in this particular case we've got a, a scanner uh, up at the exit of the roughing stands and it's seeing the temperature of a, a slab as it has just been roughed and making sure that it has a uniform temperature from edge to edge. A second scanner just after the finishing stands here is doing the same thing again making sure that you've got good temperature uniformity. Uh, one of the things that we can get if we're not having good temperature uniformity is that if one side of the strip were hotter than the other um, it will roll thinner easier and it will produce camber problems um, the other thing with temperature distribution too is grain size within the steel if you've got an even temperature from edge to edge you've got even grain size and then lastly, um, a very popular measurement over the last few years has been a scanner after the laminar cooling section, just before the coiler, to see that the cooling has been done evenly on the strip. And uh, over the last few years, some people have been using edge masking techniques here, which have been driven by zone outputs that we've uh, produced from the scanner so that they can still modify the temperature profile even in the uh, even in the last cooling section so here's some um, images of scanners in operation 
here we have in a steel mill a continuous caster and uh, just as the uh, slab has been straightened and just before the crop shear we have a scanner up here in a protective housing looking down through this slit in this uh, deflector shield that's been put there to keep a lot of that energy away from the scanner okay a measuring temperature across there just before uh, just before cropping the uh, slab um, this next photo on the, on the right side is uh, one of a coil box uh, again in a, a strip mill and here we have a scanner mounted on an arm above the strip checking and measuring and displaying temperature from edge to edge of that strip um, this particular arm uh, was a very nice design done by the engineering company who did the installation and it allowed for the scanner to be swung out of position uh, if ever anyone wanted to do maintenance on the line and then it could be quickly swung back into position into the same alignment. This is a thermal image and a thermal profile of a, a rotary kiln. In this case, this is a rotary kiln, a, a zinc kiln, and they're monitoring the kiln shell outer temperature to detect if they have any loss of refractory within that kiln. If they were to lose a brick or, or, or lose uh, part of uh, the insulation, uh, it would show up as a hot spot on the shell of the kiln. and if they catch it like this, they can do something before it causes damage to the kiln itself. Um, in this particular thermal image, which is uh, moving from top to bottom, uh, so in a vertical way, to mimic the rotation of the kiln, uh, you can actually see grout lines between the bricks in the kiln. Okay, it's very, very sensitive is the scanner. And we can also see a hot spot that developed here. And when we place a thermal profile uh, of that same image in the scene, you can see that that hot spot is considerably hotter at 720 degrees, whereas other things in the scene are in the 500s. Okay, so it's very easy and very effective to detect um, a hot spot developing on a process like this. Okay, this is plastic containers. These are these are uh, containers that are used for uh, iced tea, and these containers are blow molded. Uh, they are heated and then blown into molds to produce um, a container. And it's very important that certain temperatures up the side of the container are maintained, so that the container. Uh, becomes stable uh, when it is filled with, in this particular case, all iced tea containers are filled with hot tea. And if, if the container were not produced at the right temperatures, the container could deform when it's filled. So these containers are moving fast and fast. And as you can see on the x-axis of this image, we only have around three seconds worth of containers going by, so that's the advantage of having a very fast scan speed available to you, in that you can uh, watch a great amount of detail on even very fast movement items. This is a thermal image from a scanner um, used at a float um, glass line. Here, this, um, this ribbon of glass is, uh, give you a scale on it, it's about, it's about uh, 13 feet wide. And the interest in a, in a float glass line, when they anneal the glass, is that they get the temperature even from edge to edge. If they don't get the temperature even from edge to edge, they can get exactly what we see in this image, in that they have a breakage in the process which causes them a huge amount of downtime and grief. And you can see that the, the resolution of the scanner is good enough even to see the tiny cracks in the glass that have come from this breakage. Okay, so the, the scanner has an extremely fine definition when it's looking at the process. This 
is a thermal image taken of uh, auto windshields as they are being segmented. So these windshields um, get placed flat on top of a uh, frame, and that frame has a, a curvature to it. They go through a furnace, they reach a temperature at which they start to sag into that furnace and form the curvature of that particular uh, vehicle that it's needed to be uh, fitted on. Um, in this particular case, the customer was having issues with the windshields where when they were installed in vehicles in northern states or in Canada, um, in the winter time when you went and put your uh, defroster on, uh, the defogger, uh, sometimes you could have the windshield crack all the way across at the bottom. And they found that it was an issue that was caused all the way back when the windshield was made and segmented by having a non-uniform temperature on the windshield and stress being built up in the glass because of that. Here's a photo of a scanner and this is um, placed above a conveyor belt. And this scanner is used in this particular application to see hot inclusions uh, going by. Uh, and these hot inclusions may exist from time to time. What they want to do is they want to spot a tiny hot inclusion, an alarm on it, so that they can, they can divert what's on that conveyor off for a few seconds so that that hot inclusion doesn't get into a storage pile and cause a fire. Okay. In this particular case, this was uh, lignite coal uh, that was being used at this plant but also powder river basin coal has similar issues. Um, DRI pellets at steel mills can have similar issues. Um, so there's a number of different conveyor belt applications where to detect very small, fast-moving, hot inclusions, an alarm on them is a very, very good thing. And the scanner, with its thousand temperature points, scanned across that belt and scanning very quickly at 150 scans a second catches those inclusions that otherwise wouldn't get detected and would pass and cause problems. This is a shot of a scanner mounted inside a small forming machine. And this is an example of uh, plastic thermoforming this company was making um, was making containers for uh, medical uh, devices. When the medical devices are supplied to a hospital, they are prepackaged in a sterile container, and they were making these containers. And as they thermoform the containers, they need to know again that temperatures in certain parts of the width of that material are at certain levels so that as the plastic moves to the mold, the mold will form that plastic correctly and that that plastic won't spring back after it's been molded. Okay, in this particular case, um, these pieces of plastic would go by in about three-tenths of a second and there'd be about three feet of plastic and because of the very high speed of scan rate, uh, you were able to see a very smooth thermal image of what is passing and correct any of the heaters in the heater zone uh, to give you the correct temperatures when you're forming the plastic containers. Plastic thermoforming is um, very important with scanners. Uh, a lot of the materials that are being used nowadays only have a, a, a forming window of around 30 Fahrenheit. If you go below that temperature, um, you can't form the material it springs back and if you go above that 30 degree window uh, you spoil the surface of the material and, and so you, you get this uh, 295 to 325 Fahrenheit range on a lot of plastics which is very important to, uh, to maintain. Alright, this is a, a thermal image 
of a torpedo car in a steel mill. And uh, on the left, you see the physical uh, device. This is uh, uh, a lot of people call these ladle cars. Some people call them torpedo cars. And what they are is a railroad car, which is refractory lined. And it will transport liquid iron from the blast furnace to the steel making facility. And what the customer needs to know is the status of the refractory insulation on the inside of that uh, torpedo car so that they can manage the wear on the torpedo car and they know when to reline. And at the same time, they like to run them as long as possible because a torpedo car with a thin lining carries more liquid iron. So they have to make less trips backwards and forwards between the blast furnace and the steel making facility. So it's one of these where they're trying to maximize the amount of liquid iron that they're transporting, but at the same time they don't want to get into a danger situation of having a breakout from one of these, and uh, in the worst case, killing somebody or injuring somebody. Um, and, and in some cases, when these things have had a problem, um, they destroy the rail line, and the whole facility has to close down until that rail line is uh, reconstructed and the uh, car that's affected is removed from the area and that could be a few days of lost production. So we see here on the right side the thermal image that's taken by a scanner which is next to the line and that scanner is uh, scanning vertically downwards and as the car goes by it's producing a thermal image. At the opposite side of the line is another scanner taking an image of the other side. And in this particular case, uh, we have uh, RFID tags mounted onto the frame of the torpedo car so that as each of the torpedo cars cast passes the scanner, uh, we use the file name for the torpedo car on the saved data. In that way, we can go back through the database and scroll back on one particular side of one particular car and see a growth of wear over a period of time on that. This is a thermal image, again, with a scanner from a hot strip mill. And uh, there's the uh, thermal image at the top. There is a longitudinal profile uh, produced by the scanner. Uh, at the bottom, which matches up to that thermal image on the top. And what we're seeing there is obviously, again, an image from edge to edge. Um, and this banding pattern here was caused by a pump uh, that had a, a cyclical problem. And it would surge uh, intermittently. And uh, this uh, pump was applying coolant to the surface of the steel. And because of this uh, problem, uh, it was producing this banding effect, which was actually uh, reflected in the temperature of the steel and producing very bad product. And they were able to see this problem and correct it very easily by using a scanner. OK, so here's a, we saw earlier on the connectivity for a single scanner uh, being used on a process. Uh, you can use up to eight scanners simultaneously uh, networked together going over to a common piece of software, all displaying simultaneously and, and producing outputs simultaneously. Okay, so we use, again, standard Ethernet topology. Okay, nothing special with the cabling. Okay, and um, very straightforward setup. I mentioned earlier that people uh, like to set up zones on a process. And this is a little better way of describing how these zones are set up. Um, we, we can set up up to 12 analog outputs from a, from a scanner. And they can be positioned as outputs that relate to lanes on the moving process. Okay, and the outputs. Uh, can be either the average of what's happening in that lane, or the peak of what's happening in that lane, or a minimum, or, or um, 
an average above a certain threshold, a few more parameters as well. Each of those lanes can be positioned individually in its location and its width. So in this example, we've got 11 lanes of a pretty even width all batted up against each other here. But that doesn't have to be the case. You could have lanes that overlap. You can have lanes uh, that cover very wide areas and then gaps between lanes. So you can individually set the location and the size of each lane. And then each lane is individually set as to whether it's a peak or an average or a minimum or an average above threshold or whatever. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to take these and then feed these outputs back into a control system for closed loop control. And, and if you remember back to when we started talking, um, the single sensor in this device, which is scanned across, has one calibration. So if you see a temperature at this side, which is different to a temperature at this side, it really is different because the same detector made all those measurements in that image. And so in this particular case where I've got 11 lanes, this is like having 11 separate thermometers looking at 11 separate areas on the product, but all with exactly the same calibration. There's no differential calibration involved. OK, the, uh, the I.O. processor that we would connect to give you physical, like 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, um, is a little DIN rail mounted device. Um, it measures about um, 2 and a half inches high, and it's about 2 and a half inches deep. And then it's modular. You just add little blocks to it to give you more outputs or more inputs or whatever. And the device is uh, driven by uh, Ethernet, has standard RJ45 uh, connectors on it. Okay, and it just hooks anywhere into the connection between the scanner and the uh, readout computer. A number of customers don't uh, have uh, don't have the need for displays and they just use scanners to output outputs and they run them blind otherwise. Okay, and that is perfectly okay because we don't require a computer to drive this. The intelligence for all of this is contained within the scanner itself. All right. Um, so on the performance side of the scanners, we can go anywhere between um, 10 scans a second and 150 scans a second. As I mentioned earlier, uh, if you have a very slow moving process like um, um, a float glass line or, or, or a continuous caster, then you, you may be better just setting it down at 10 scans a second. That's still very fast. But if you have something moving very quickly, uh, then we can uh, dial the unit all the way up to 150 scans a second. And even at 150 scans a second, we sample 1,000 data points each line that we scan across the product. On our high temperature scanners, the target spot size is distance divided by 500. Uh, so if you were 500 inches away from something, you'd be looking at one inch spots. Uh, and our lowest temperature scanners, uh, we're still 114 to one on that ratio. So still very small spot sizes regardless of distance. We have a, uh, a built-in alignment laser that defines the uh, where the scanner is looking. If you're trying to install a scanner, at a gap in a process between structures, this makes it much easier to do. Uh, the mountings for the scanner are external to it and are fitted tool free. So when you are uh, mounting the scanner on a uh, cooled air purged mounting, the coolant and the purging goes to the mounting, not to the scanner. And so if you need to remove the scanner for some reason, 
it's very quick to do. You don't have to call a plumber out when you're removing the sensor. Okay, and this is a very important part of the way that we do our designs. So you're able to remove and reinstall sensors in the same alignment, but with you don't need to have to remove coolant or air to do that. On the front of the scanner, we use a, a, a standard sapphire window, and that sapphire window is um, uh, it costs a little more to use sapphire, but the payback is great in that it won't scratch. Um, it's very, very durable. Um, it won't get affected by acids or solvents, um, and it's just a, a great window material to use. Um, the scan angle of 80 degrees, um, if you want to do a quick calculation on the, on the product that you've got, you'd need to be a minimum distance away from that product of the product width divided by 1.68. So if, you, if your product width was 16.8 feet wide, you would need to be 10 feet away. If it was 16.8 inches, you'd need to be 10 inches away. Okay, so just divide the product width by 1.68, and that's the minimum distance you need to be away. There's no problem being further away than that at all. Okay, but that's the minimum distance to see the full width. And then the last point on this is, because of the scanning technique, when you look at a thermal image, every temperature value in that thermal image is taken at that one scan line, at that one position in the process. Okay, if you were to use a standard 2D thermal imaging camera, what a lot of folks don't realize when they look at a process with a 2D thermal imaging camera is that they're looking 10 feet up the line in one direction and maybe 5 feet down the line in the other direction. And so they've got a temperature trend over that period of time in that distance, in that image. And they can make decisions which are wrong for the process. In the way that a scanner takes measurements, all of the measurements in that image are all taken at that one line position. So it's like having a pressure transmitter connected at one point in a pipe. You're making your measurements at that one point in the process, not over a certain distance like you would do with a thermal imaging camera. So the, uh, to sum up with the connectivity of this, the uh, scanner itself uh, talks standard Ethernet directly from the scanner. Uh, we use industry standard IEEE uh, power over Ethernet. And the scanner itself, which is providing digital readings to the optional software or the optional I.O. processor, can support simultaneously two sessions. So we have some customers who are using it with our software, but they are simultaneously interrogating the scanner for other data from a device of their own. And the scanner can support two simultaneous communication sessions over the same connector. Um, all of the computations of where lanes are and the temperature values and everything like this are all done inside the scanner. Okay, and, and uh, we have a number of customers who just buy scanners because they have people in-house who know how to write the connectivity software just to talk to their control systems, and they don't even think about buying software from us. Um, conversely, we have a lot of customers who say, we'd like you to provide this for us, and in that case, we have a full software suite. All right. There's a display from um, a customer who has four scanners simultaneously running. Okay, and so they have four thermal images of that product. And then at the same time, they have what we call a, uh, a multiple profile here, which shows those same four images, but in profiles, cross profiles, at each of those four locations. And at the hottest location, you see a profile there. At the next zone, a profile there. Then the next. And then finally, the last zone with a profile there. And 
that's a nice display for them in that it not only shows them the four temperature profiles, but they're able to see the shape of the profiles too, and if anything needs modifying in the shape of the temperature profile on the process. In this particular example, we're showing the same product in three different ways simultaneously. Okay, um, I'll start with this one at the top right, and this is a cross profile across a product, and we're able to see a temperature scale on one side of the product from 250 to uh, about 375 degrees, and here the customer has dropped cursors onto that profile to show him temperatures at specific points across the width of that product. To the left, we have a thermal image of that same product, uh, which is um, half a second long. So you can see here, 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So that particular process, a fast-moving process, there's half a second worth of data in there and you're able to see this thermal image of the product. Now, with the same information, we've also put up a thermal image here in what we call relative mode. And in relative mode, you're able to set a set point for your process, and then a tolerance either side of that set point. And in this particular case, what they set as their set point plus and minus a tolerance shows up in green. So everything that they're making that's in tolerance is in green on that display. And everything that's above temperature is in reds. Everything that's below temperatures is in blues. And that's a very, very good display to use for a lot of operators. Uh, it's a very quick to understand and quick to make changes with display. Here again, we have a, a display of a a strip process here, and whereby, again, the temperature in this particular case, the intolerance stuff was between 1150 plus and minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can see that all of one side of the process is within their tolerance that they wanted. But on the other side of the process, they were running considerably colder. And it was very, very quick for them to balance their cooling on this process to give them uh, correct product uh, characteristics. So let's go through features and benefits on this. Um, we've got a very high scan speed available to us, uh, which is very good for fast-moving objects, fast-moving strip, fast-moving products, okay, and allows you to uh, increase your productivity by being able to see the temperature profiles from edge to edge on all of the products. Um, we're able to see very small target spot sizes. and We have an adjustable focus. Okay. And that allows you to see very fine surface detail and, and again, to improve the quality of what you're making. Um, a thousand data points to scan. So very important, even at the fastest scan speeds, we're still seeing a thousand small data points across the scan, which gives you, again, very fine surface detail. Um, Ethernet, power over Ethernet, uh, it's all digital. There's no analog conversions there. And it's a single cable connection, so there's very low installation costs. You're not running multiple cables to this thing. It's just You're just running one four-conductor power over Ethernet cable. You can set up up to 48, 40 to 20 milliamp channels um, to be shared by different scanner systems that are on the uh, on the system here. So if you had if you had three scanners all simultaneously connected to something, you could buy one 48 channel processor and share the channels between them, and say have 12 channels for one scanner, 12 for another, 12 for another. Um, internal alignment laser allows you to um, accurately install a device uh, if you are looking in tight areas. 
Um, the standard housing is IP65. Uh, there's a built-in air purge on the mounting plate, which keeps the window clean. Uh, the sapphire window that we talked about before is flat and flush, so there aren't any corners to build up um, dirt in. Okay, it's very, uh, very easy to keep clean. Again, single cable connection, so um, easy installation, low installation cost, and then toll-free mounting. Uh, you mount the mounting plate in position and then simply clamp the scanner onto the mounting plate. So to sum up, um, we're scanning up to 150 scans a second. Uh, even at the fastest scan speeds, we still sample 1,000 data points per line. Uh, Ethernet directly from the scanner, single cable connection, um, up to 12, 4 to 20 milliamp analog zone outputs per scanner, um, internal alignment laser, IP65 housing, quick release cooling, tool free removal and reinstallation, um, durable sapphire window, and very accurate edge to edge surface temperature measurement because the same one sensor measures all of the temperatures within that thermal image. So there you go. Richard, thank you very much for your presentation. If you have any specific application questions, feel free to give us a call at 800-9-LESSMAN or 800-953-7626. If you do not know who your account manager is, feel free to ask for me, Mike DeLaCluse, and I make, I'll make sure that you get taken care of. Our next webinar is going to cover turbine flow meters on May 25th, and we will be presented by Sandy Kelly, the North American Sales Manager for Hoffer Flow. Thank you very much for attending.